Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to the fifth video in Going 2D. Today we're going to be creating a score system uh, where every time our ball hits either the right or the left boundary, we will change a score variable that we can then display on the screen with uh, some cool fun. I'm sorry if my voice sounds a little weird today, but I'm sick at the moment. Uh, and I just really wanted to get this video out there since it's been so long since the last one. Almost a week. Cool, so uh, as always, I've opened up Unity, uh, just as we left it the last time. And uh, today we're going to be creating two separate scripts. So let's go ahead and uh, make the first one. So the first one we can pretty much make in the uh, Game Master object, so underscore GM object. So go there and hit Add Component. And then we're going to call this game manager because we already have a game setup script. Uh, you could uh, mix these two together, but I just want to keep them separate because they are created in separate videos. So I'm going to hit create an ad and double click it to open it up in Mono Develop. So double click it here and it will open up. And let's just start with this script. Uh, cool, so basically we want the script to have two uh, variables. Uh, first off, the score for player 1 and the score for player 2. So uh, we are going to make these two static variables and the reason for this is that we want to access them from a static function which we are going to create in a sec. So the first one is going to be static var player score 1 and it's just going to default to zero. You could do type int equals zero. Uh, it's going to be the same. And then static var player score two type int and defaulting to zero. Then we're going to make a new function or just rename the function update. Uh, but before the function uh, declaration, we want to put also static here. And that just allows us to uh, easily call this function from any object in our scene. So uh, let's call this score. And uh, we are going to take in a parameter because we want to find out whether or not it was our right wall or our left wall that the ball hit. Uh, because we want to change uh, the score for the player uh, opposite to it. So uh, therefore we want to, uh, there, there are several ways, several ways to do this. We could use a boolean that we declare for each object, but I'm just going to use the names because I know what they're called. And uh, that's something that doesn't change. And that's pretty much the easiest way. So I'm simply just going to uh, type in a parameter here that will store the name of uh, the object that called this function. And uh, then from there we can determine uh, what value we want to change. So that all sounded much harder than it really is. So in here we're just going to do a uh, wall name and uh, then it's going to be a type string. So basically we're just saying that whenever, and that's a capital S, that's really important, uh, whenever this function gets called, we want to have the parameter uh, of a type string. And we're going to call this wall name for further use. So inside of this, we can then do if wall name is equal to, and then just take one of the walls. Let's do the right wall is equal to right wall. Open up some brackets. And in here do player score one plus equals one. And if not, so else. And you can do an, an else if if you had uh, more than two players. Uh, if it, you had some kind of crazy pong, you can just do else if, else if, else if. Uh, so say else if, if top wall. Uh, but we're just going to do else. Player score 2 plus equals 1. So now we will assign uh, or say plus one to the correct variable. Cool. Uh, we are not going to display the score yet. We are going to handle that in a sec. 
so first off, let's make sure that this function is being called. And we could uh, just, yeah, let's make it debug.log and say uh, player score one is and then a space plus player score one and then just close it off and copy this make another one called player score two is plus player score two so this will just allow us to quickly see uh, what the current score of the players are so now when we play the game uh, we know that nothing will happen because first off uh, these boundaries are still not set to trigger, so they will just collide with the ball and uh, not call any logic. So that's what we're going to fix now. So let's go ahead and select both the right and the left wall. And because these have the exact same properties, we can just uh, select both of them and then make changes to them at the same time. So let's first off select is trigger, that's really important. And hit add component, new script. And in here we can then do, uh, let's do side walls. Uh, it's up to you. And then double click that and open it up in Mando Develop. And so now, oh, let me just actually zoom in on the code here. I'm sorry that you had to see it uh, all kinds of small. <laughs> uh, but, but you can copy it now if it was hard to see before. So just pause it here. And uh, I'll move on over here. So in here we can do a function that will go get called uh, every time something hits our trigger. And we have to remember that everything is in 2D, so we have to put 2D after that. So normally you just do function on trigger enter like that. But because it's two-dimensional, we put just put 2D. And then we want to know something about what hit us. So we just store some information. Let's call this um, hit info. And it's going to be of type collider. And then again, remember 2D. So of type collider 2D. And then we can simply go ahead and say uh, that if hit info dot name is equal to ball because we only want to call this if it's our ball that hits the wall. Then we can go ahead and send an information to our game manager that score should be called. So then we can go game manager dot score. And the reason why we can do it this symbol is because we've made it a static function. So we can easily call it. And then we're going to send over a variable uh, which we're going to declare right before. So we're just going to do a new variable um, and we're going to call this, uh, let's just call it wall name. And it's going to be equal to transform.name. And so that's just what we're going to send. So we're just going to send wall name. And, uh, and so everything should be working now because in here, once our player hits this trigger, it checks if it is, or once the ball hits this trigger, it checks it's, uh, if it is the ball, and if it is, it sends. Uh, it says that our game manager should call the function score uh, with the wall name, and then it gets th thrown over here, where it then uh, says that if the wall name is the right wall, the player's one score goes up with one point, and else the player two score goes up with one point, and then it debug that logs it so we can see it in the console. Great, so let's uh, let's try this out. And uh, yeah, so it hit our right wall and the player score one is one and the player score two is zero. So we can see this is working. Great, so now let's just make some GUI that will actually display this on screen. So let's do function. Uh, and this is in the game manager script. Function on GUI, where we do all of our GUI stuff. And in here, we can say uh, GUI dot label, and there are multiple ways of doing this, but this is just the easy way. So GUI dot label, and this will work just fine because it's only like two GUI elements, and it won't be taxing uh, on the computer. So G 
DUI.label, new rect, and uh, then we're going to do screen dot width divided by 2 minus 150, comma something like, let's say 20 might be good. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, let's just do 20, comma 100, comma 100, close that off, comma, and then the string. And you could do uh, player one score and then type in the score, but I just think that's way too much text. So I'm just going to leave uh, that at nothing. So just do the two um, uh, semicolons. And it's important that you actually have them there uh, because if you just input the player score one like this, uh, it won't work. You have to just input two empty ones and then say plus player score one and uh, it will actually work and then we can just copy this whole line of code down here and instead of minus 50 we do plus 50 there and instead of player score one we do player score two so what we do here is in our uh, on GUI function uh, we make two labels uh, which uh, both will go to the center of the screen in the um, horizontal uh, axis and uh, it then subtracts 150 for the first one, so a little to the left and uh, adds 150 to the second one, so that's a little to the right and they have the same uh, distance uh, on the y-axis and then the 100 uh, comma 100 that's just so we don't get any clipping on the text. And, uh, and then we, we of course, uh, input our, our player score. So now when we hit play, <coughs> this won't look too great, but it should be working. So now when we hit play, we can see uh, the two scores here. Great, so now let's make this look a, a little bit cooler. Uh, so in our project here, uh, we can go ahead and create a GUI skin. Uh, so in our game manager, let's first make a slot for this. So let's just do var uh, the skin. Or you could also call it uh, layout or anything you want. I'm just going to do the skin of type. Whoops. Of type GUI skin. And uh, close that off. And then down here in the function on GUI, right before the GUI label, uh, we're just going to do GUI.skin equals the skin and close it off and save this so now when we select our gm object under the game manager we now have an empty uh, slot called the skin uh, so let's now create a gui skin so right click in the project pane and then go to gui skin and let's call this just yeah it's pretty much the only thing we're gonna have uh, let's call it uh, score skin and then if we are going to use it for more things, we can rename it later. So score, oops, skin with a K, score, skin. Cool. Uh, what we can do now is we can uh, first off make sure to drag this under the DM object. So we won't forget that later. And then we can go down under the label property here because that's what we are making. We are making a GUI label. And uh, then we can go to the font size, and this uh, right now says zero, but it is not zero. That just means that it will use the default size, which is, uh, I can't remember, I believe it's about 12. Uh, but let's just input something like 34 and uh, hit play. And now we can see the score is much laster, uh, larger and uh, looks much better. Uh, we could actually make this even larger, something like 50, uh, if you would like. And uh, notice that if I bump this up even more, we will at last see some clipping occur. And again, if, if this is a problem for you, all you need to do is, is bump these 100, 100 up to maybe 200, 200. But I think uh, the, uh, the 50 font size was, uh, was okay. So let's just change it back here. And, uh, and this is what it looks like. I may want to just bump the score down a little bit more. But again, that's personal, personal preference. Uh, let's try 25. 
And uh, yeah, so now let's uh, change this to uh, a little bit more original of a font, something more computer-like. So let's open up our browser and go to assetstore.unity3d.com because the asset store used just uh, to be inside of Unity on the window and then uh, asset store, but that loads really, really slowly. So now that they have also built a cool uh, browser version. And while I'm in here, I'm just going to quickly plug the inventory system that is currently uh, most popular on the GUI here. Um, it's a cool inventory system I've made if you want to be able to pick up items and uh, equip them on your character and, and such. So uh, definitely check it out. Uh, you can just search for inventory and it's completely free, free and customizable and it's, it's this one. So uh, yeah, check it out if, if you're looking for something like that. Cool, so uh, instead let's type computer font. I'm pretty sure that's a, uh, there's a free one in here. Yeah, this one, computer font pack uh, is pretty great. And it just has uh, a variety of free to use fonts. Uh, you can also uh, download some just from the internet, not necessarily from the asset store. But just click uh, open in Unity once you've found something you like and say launch application. And it will uh, launch the asset store inside of Unity. And it's currently loading on my secondary monitor here. So just give it a sec to load. So I could get it over here. It's, it's taking some time. The asset store inside of Unity is really slow. So you'll just have to bear with it. That's why it's best to do the browsing uh, inside of, of the browser. So here it is. And now we can press download. And, uh, and just quickly log in here. Don't know why I'm not logged in. But here we go. I think it's okay you see my email. Which is also on the, uh, the website if you want to ask questions. Or I guess too many questions already. I shouldn't say that. Uh, so import. And uh, it will slowly import all of the different assets needed. And let's close this down. And we can see that uh, we have a new folder here called Computer Pack. And in here is a variety of cool fonts. Uh, so let's just go in and select the uh, score skin. And under the font up here, you can also change it just for the label. But I'm going to change it for all of them. We can now uh, change the font. So let me just scale this window down a bit. Maybe hit play so we can see change uh, while we are playing. Uh, so we can select some different ones and just uh, browse through until you find one you like. That one is not too bad. <laughs> That's a funny one. Uh, that one is okay. Yeah, I would like something really pixely. That one is, is pretty fun. That's not so much what I'm looking for. Try and see if you can find something that fits. Hopefully you should be able to. I think uh, this one over here, that one is pretty, uh, pretty fun. So we can do that one. And if you see that some of the fonts uh, look a little uh, low resolution, you can go in. Uh, so this was the uh, Lilliput steps. So we can go ahead and find that. And then uh, bump up the font size under the import settings. Let's do 64. And it, uh, it will help with the... Uh, it will help uh, with the uh, resolution. So just play around with some of these settings until we get something that, that looks how we want. Uh, let's see. Hinted smooth, hinted raster. There. So the hinted raster... Whatever that means makes this look much more harsh and uh, much more pixely. And that was what I'm going for. So um, I'm pretty satisfied with that. It looks like the old school Pong just a little bit. So uh, that's pretty much it for this video. I'm sorry if I've sounded so weird. Uh, but yeah, so glad we got this out of the way. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.